It's Holy Wednesday as we make our way through Holy Week, friends. Welcome back to evening prayer. Glad to be with you again this evening. Service of evening prayer begins on page 115 of the Book of Common Prayer, or you can follow along in the bulletin uh, that is linked to this page. Light a candle, find a comfortable spot, take a breath, and let us pray. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Saying, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Saying together. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the world. The psalm appointed for this evening, friends, is Psalm 70. We'll read the psalm together. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasures in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Here ends the reading. Saying together, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. At supper with his friends, Jesus was troubled in spirit, and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Here ends the reading. Saying together, Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hello. I'd like to start off by first joining our rector in wishing all of you well. And I join her in praying for all of us uh, to be safe and healthy and to be back together once again on Sundays and during weekday services. Well, today is Holy Wednesday. The church actually has another more descriptive name for today, even though perhaps it's a little more disturbing. It is called Spy Wednesday. According to the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church, Spy Wednesday is that Wednesday in Holy Week when Judas betrayed Jesus. Let us recall where we're at. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem with his disciples and he has a last supper with them while he is still with us. And at this last supper, he washes the disciples' feet. He shows servanthood to his disciples and he wants to give them an example of how they should serve. 
Now, after this, and where our gospel begins today, Jesus is disturbed spiritually. He's disturbed by the fact that he knows that one of his chosen will betray him, will hand over him to arrest and ultimately to execution. Now, Peter, one of the disciples, and the disciple whom Jesus loved, the unnamed disciple, asked Jesus, who is this traitor? Jesus says to them, well, just watch what I do. It will be the one to whom I give this piece of bread dipped in oil. He gives this piece of bread to Judas, and therefore and thereby it, the traitor is revealed to all. But hold on a second. Why didn't Jesus just tell Judas, leave, depart, Go out into the night. Do what you're about to do. No, instead of that, he pauses. He makes Jesus an offer of bread. Today's gospel reminds me of uh, the old hymn 519 in the 1940 hymnal, which we sang when I was growing up. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Jesus, instead of dismissing Judas right away, gives him a moment to decide. Now, sadly, at this very moment, John tells us that Satan enters into Judas and is welcomed by him. Only then, accordingly, does Jesus tell Judas, go, do quickly what you are going to do. Jesus had it. Jesus gave Judas a chance. Jesus had the moment to decide to take the better of two paths, but he chose, he chose the evil side. I think that in this dramatic scene of Jesus with Judas, we are at the heart of John's gospel. Everything that follows from here on is a consequence of Judas' decision. Everything that happens with regard to his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion. Yet Judas' decision also accelerates Jesus' move to the cross and resurrection. Unknown to Judas, his betrayal of Jesus accelerates the movement towards Jesus' glorification. Jesus kept teaching and referring to God's commandment to Moses in the wilderness, telling Moses to lift up the serpent in the wilderness for the good of the Israelites. He too will be lifted up for the benefit of all. Jesus said upon Judas' departure, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. Jesus will achieve glory by being lifted up on the cross crucified next to criminals on Good Friday. But on Easter Sunday, he will be raised up for the world to see. Jesus' life and ministry and sacrifice redefine what glory and what lordship mean. At the Last Supper, in fact, Jesus told the disciples, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. And if I have washed your feet, you too ought to wash one another's feet service and sacrifice for others. That is our glorification, the glory that Jesus calls us all to do. Perhaps some of you, or hopefully many of you, if not all, have seen the film Glory, the 1989 film that is one of my favorite films of all time. A true story of free Northern African Americans signing up to serve in the 54th Massachusetts Regiment to go march into the South to free their enslaved brothers and sisters. This is a must-see film, I think, that exemplifies the sacrifice that Jesus intends here by glory. Each time that we come to the altar to accept the anointed bread that Jesus offers us to receive Christ's body and blood, we take again another moment, another step of decision making the right decision that Judas did not make, to decide to walk in the daylight, not in darkness. This is Holy Week, and we continue in the final stage of our walk with Jesus, 
first joining him in the darkness of the cross, but then at the eternal light of Easter morning we also join him. Thanks be to God for this. Be careful. Be safe. Amen. Saying together. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your no way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And now let us take a moment to offer our own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. At a time where so many are suffering in so many different ways, Lord, we ask your presence among all in need of you. We pray this night especially for the sick and the dying, those who are weary, who are hungry, who are forgotten. We pray this night especially for Laura, for Michael, for Paul, for Anne. And any others we name now silently or aloud. We give thanks for those who continue to support us in so many ways. Our first responders, our healthcare providers, those who are sustaining our economy and all of the essentials that are keeping us afloat right now. 
We pray for those who have died. For Joe and for Jerry. May their souls and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And now saying together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.